This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Doom. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Check your show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Checky Show. Yeah, hey, Rudolph here, can I help you? Hi, Rudolph, how are you doing today? That's uh, so, not so good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm calling your number, but can you just let me know what kind of service you provide? Yeah, it's this fucking Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, all right? Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Uh Uh Uh-huh. We have a problem here, and if you don't even know why you're calling, I would appreciate you not calling, because I got a bunch of goddamn reindeer, and their noses aren't... uh, I think I remember why I called. What? I think I'm calling to ask you to not... Speak directly into the microphone. We oh, had sorry. just spoke about this a few minutes ago. Let me tell you something. Yeah. It's not Rudolph the Reindeer. Oh, okay. It's Rudolph the Very Angry Guy. Oh, I see. And it's just that character. Oh, okay. I'm just, ang- I'm just myself all along. I call myself Rudolph. Mm. So it's really just Rudolph the Angry Guy. Can it be back off? The oh, jeez, I don't microphone. know. Back on the mic again. <laughs> hey, let me move that away. All right, how's that? That's much better. Uh, somehow I'm not so angry anymore. Oh, that the mic is back away from me. I maybe, think the presence of the mic was giving me some sort of evil entity. Perhaps that's it. Maybe it's, you know, this is the last of our spooky episodes for October 2020. And perhaps it's culminating into some sort of possession from your microphone. Spooky. So, uh, what was there? Was that going someplace? I don't. I hate to. That was going around. nowhere oh, okay, fast. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to episode number ninety-five of the Middle Age Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast, featuring your pals. Ninety-five. Yeah. Oh. Uh. You thought that was going bad. Wait till you hear this one. <laughs> okay, I'm excited for it. Is This is uh, Mongo Jerry and Roberta Flack. Okay, I so guess I'm did, Roberta huh? Flack. You are Roberta Flack. Okay, Mongo Jerry, how are you? I'm pretty fucking upset. Oh, shit, why? Because this whole thing with Rudolph and the reindeer is bothering me, too. I see. It's that time of year. And what was Rudolph upset again about the noses? Yeah, his nose was on the fritz. I see. Well, he was doing a little too much. Hee haw. Oh, okay. Gavin McInnes reference. Excellent. Uh, all right. Well, that's uh, exciting stuff. Just Mongo can you imagine Je- oh, okay. Mongo Jerry and Roberta Flack? I, that that would just never work. Why? Why? Because Mongo Jerry's a, an oaf, and Roberta Flack's a genius. Uh, yeah, but I feel Anybody like... calls uh, himself Mongo Jerry, okay? We got a problem. I hear that. All also, right. you know, what is that song? Is, it, is he trying to rip off um, John Sebastian just 100% or what? If that's in the summertime? It is in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, mm-hmm. I don't think you can write a better song than... In the summertime? What a day for a day drink. Oh. Well, there is no doubt that John Sebastian is a musical genius. Is that true? I would say he is a songwriting genius. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I meant, but that's fine. Yes. Is there is there a doubt? Do people, do? are there naysayers? Are there John Sebastian naysayers out there? I would say that there are people who have cast aside John Sebastian simply because of the name, The Lovin' Spoonful. Really? And they might have just not understood what the band was, man. Well, then they better watch out because we might just do a Lovin' Spoonful episode. I got a spoonful of lovin'. And that's what they were talking about. It was a blues reference. Oh, is that true? Yeah. All right. Well, we will learn more about this on the our man love was and named after a blues reference. I see. Hot 
time somewhere in the city. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. That is some shit, man. That is not John Sebastian. Mm-hmm. Hot time somewhere in the city? Man, Back of my neck getting sweaty and that pretty? That is, see, that's the beauty of it. It is John Sebastian. Are you sure? I am certain. All right. I thought it was like an, uh, one of those other bands. Yes, no. What what band am I thinking of? Oh. The Blood, Set, Sweat, and Tears. Oh, that's well, what I well they're, yeah, well, they're set from the same... Uh, they come out of the same scene, man. Well, you are 100% right. Somewhere in the city is the Love and Spoonful. It is not a song I associate with them, but there you go. Another huge hit. That man wrote hits. How many hits does that guy have? Well, he has all the hits. Yeah, well, he's got Welcome Back, Carter. I think that went to number one. That absolutely went to number one. And I, you know what I like about John Sebastian? He's I mean, a happy, fun-loving kind of vibe. Uh, yeah, he's there's something about that guy's vibe that is uh, should be bottled, should be bottled and distributed. Yeah, so take that, Mongo Jerry. Well, I, 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 coming back to your point, I don't know that. I'm Ro- fucking down with Mongo Jerry, man. I hear you, but I don't know that R- Roberta Flack would 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 turn her nose at a Mongo Jerry. She might be very. <laughs> she might. She might pet a Mongo Jerry at the sanctuary. No, but, she might say to herself, "You know what? Let me collab with this this weirdo. Let me Let's collab with this we- Mongo Jerry." She, is that a reference to some sort of? Is that a racist term? Mongo Jerry. Yeah. Well, Maybe he's, is that uh, why you keep saying he's it? Appropriating something there. Are you hoping it no, is? No, I don't know. A mongo, mongrel, mongo. It's a, a. It's not mongo. It's mungo. Oh, okay. What the hell is that, man? Mungo Jerry. Oh, are, Jesus! <laughs> you asked. What? Mungo Jerry are a British rock group who. No. They're they are. Wait, is that like Jethro Tull? Wait, there's not just one guy named Mungo Jerry. Okay, I've got to reevaluate my whole thing. A British rock group who experienced their greatest success in the early 70s with a changing lineup that has always been fronted by Ray Dorsett. Oh, God. Tell Mungo Jerry I gotta talk to him because Thin Lizzy came over last night and she wants to talk to him, too. The group's name was inspired by the poem Mungo Jerry and Rumple Teaser from T.S. Eliot's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Found in the Jimmy Savile collection. They had nine charting singles in the UK, including two number ones and five top 20 hits in South Africa. Oh, God. And what, was can, their, uh, what was their big hit in South Africa? You can find out way we more love about apartheid. them at mungojerry.com. Tell me something. Mm. Did you think it was a guy? I thought it was one person. I, I, I have to be honest here, David. I have never given any thought about Mungo or Mungo Jerry. I uh, never have sat and thought in the 2000s, about it at all. In the 2000s, Buzzy mm-hmm. Linhart was at a party. Okay. And Mungo Jerry came up to him. Okay. And said, we used to be on the same record label, Buddha. Now, is that true? Was he on Buddha Records? I don't know that Mungo... Or am I thinking of someone else entirely? I don't know that different. Mungo Jerry would... Lie to Buzzy Lynn. Well, maybe I've miscued confusing my story. Uh-huh. Was it Mungo Jerry on Kama Sutra or any of those record labels? Okay, this is not the Mungo Jerry. You gotta sidetrack this right for a second here. Episode. This is. The I, I didn't know the na- man's name was spooky. was something other than Mungo, and that's not Mungo Jerry. Are you telling me when he reserves a table, he doesn't say, "I will have a table. My name is Mungo Jerry." I don't want to disappoint you in any way. He's not on the record label. He has never been on Buddha's record label. Wait, well, who am I thinking of, man? Wait, Mongo J. Hot Time Song. Oh, I am mistaken. <laughs> Entirely. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, who wrote Louis, 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 Louis? Oh, that's that other guy. Now, that's the man who ran into Buzzing in Heart and said we used to be on the same label. Now, is that correct? Or am I just completely gone, and man? That guy, that makes sense, because I met that guy probably as a... As a Louis 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 fan. No, no, I, I probably because I was hanging around Buzzy and... and uh, Moogie. Moogie. And, no, I, no, I was doing the... The doc. The documentary. Uh, Louis 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 Louis. Is That's Brother Louie. Brother Louie, Brother Louis, not Mongo Jerry. See, I got a problem with people who have one name and then their name together. 
You could have told me his name was Jethro Tull, and I would have believed it. Uh. Now that motherfucker hadn't been on Buddha Records. Am I wrong? I, you know what, Dave? All right, this is going nowhere. Cut all of this out. I. <laughs> Let's get back to the story. Let's get back to what story? The story of what this podcast is about. Okay, well, here we go. That was a big waste of time. <laughs> Mungo Jerry. What am I talking about? I don't know. The only thing good there was the whole John Sebastian thing. Other than that, cut that part out. <laughs> Today's episode, uh, again, the last episode of our spooky series. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Please hold while I have a sip of anything. So today's episode, uh, like I said, episode ninety (laughs) five. Did you just hit your head? No, I just. uh, What happened? Sounded like you'd been taken over by a demonic force there for a second. (laughs) Okay. What do you mean? (laughs) The noise you made when you were coughing was (laughs) interesting. It broke you, did it? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I have, uh, I have some issues with my vocal cords, and uh, you know, things happen. So I'm trying to stay hydrated so I don't get that weird sound in my voice. But it's it never goes away. All right. <clears throat> so episode ninety five is all about. Bruce Springsteen. Conspiracies, unsolved mysteries, and deep dark secrets. Oh, I've prepared the wrong material. Stop, are you serious? I have a whole thing about the big man. Why did you think, what? Okay, just kidding. Okay, because that's crazy, crazy talk. Well, you know what, what a Springsteen fan I am. Actually, I don't. Because I'm not. I see. <clears throat> this is episode seven in the series of Conspiracies, Unsolved Mysteries, and Deep Dark Secrets. Number seven. I like these ones. These ones are fun. Okay. What's well, first on? No. Well, how this usually works is how I... How does this work? All right. I usually say to you, Dave... Yes, you get to me. Okay. <laughs> you get to pick whether you want to talk about a conspiracy, an unsolved mystery, or a deep dark secret. You determine the order... Of this show. I love the <laughs> order that I determine. So, which one do you want to do first? I want to do... Unsolved Mysteries. Wow. All right. I'm asking you, is that right? That's... <laughs> it's too late. You've already chosen... Unsolved Mysteries? It's Unsolved Mysteries. Okay. Yes, yeah, seriously, now. But seriously. Uh-huh. Let's go. The Loch Ness Monster. Haven't we done this before? No. Okay. What the hell? Is this Nessie? Do they call him Nessie? I I don't think they call him Nessie. He's not Nessie. They may call her Nessie. Oh, that's the problem. They think it's a girl. It's a guy. I see. 
The Loch Ness Monster, also known by the nickname Nessie, is probably the creature that most often leaps to mind when ordinary people think about cryptozoology, which is the study of animals that may or may not exist. Nessie is virtually a symbol of, the, of cryptozoology. This creature has probably been the object of more sustained media attention than any other individual type of cryptid, with the possible exception of Sasquatch, and gray aliens. Uh, cryptozoology. Yes. That sounds more intense than it is. It does? It sounds more... I think it's pretty intense. Well... You've got your chupacabras, you've got your sasquatch. I mean, I don't think there's two more intense uh, regular animals. Well, maybe like badgers and wolverines or something i don't know but those are pretty intense no is there something called the zoologist <laughs> yes well, what do they do I, I believe they study animals why don't they study zoos i see well uh i How don't about an know. animalologist all right anyway the reason i am bringing up the loch ness monster now we've heard of the loch ness monster since we were little right yes i mean and then there's also one that they claim is in uh, Lake Champlain, right? Yeah, what's he called? Champ? Champ? I think it's Champ. Champy. Champy. <laughs> Champy Champerson. Uh, so anyway, the Loch Ness Monster has been in the news recently. I told that motherfucker to shut up. Loch Ness boatman Ronald McKenzie has kept his eyes peeled for more than 30 years. And this may be the proof that's been sought for centuries that Nessie is thriving. The image was captured by the latest sonar equipment. We turned out to the middle of the loch to head back to Fort Augustus. And as we crossed uh, the middle of the loch, we got a uh, big sonar contact about 170 metres down. The depth of the loch at that point was around 190 metres. Um, so we, the guide on board the boat at the time, told all the other passengers that were on board and took loads of pictures. Monster hunters have been astounded by the clarity of the image and the skipper is in no doubt. This equipment can't lie, uh, it's 100% genuine, there's already a sonar expert had a look at the image and uh, verified it's 100% genuine. The area's tourist agency is thrilled that Nessie appears to have ended a period of lockdown. Nessie's really had quite a hard time with the pandemic. I think she enjoyed hiding like everybody else during the lockdown period, but now I think, you know, clearly she's, she's back out for sightings. And I think it's so important that people do once again ask that question, what is in Loch Ness and what could you see if you go down there? That question of wonder that nobody has the answer to. In the unlikely event there are any doubters, the latest images show there's certainly something down there. And the experts say the sonar evidence is compelling. It was no flash in the pan. 500 feet down, contact lasted 10 seconds as the boat passed overhead. Will it inspire more visitors to come? You bet. Ian Ramage, STV News. All right, it sounds compelling. The solid and pretty big sonar contact measuring around 10 meters was detected by a boat owned by Cruise Loch Ness. Eh, is the object moving? The mystery creature is likely to feed on trout and eels at the bottom of the loch, which has the largest volume of fresh water in Britain. Director Ronald McKenzie said, Who knows what it is? There's quite a lot of fish at the bottom of the loch. There is carnivorous trout and eels. I believe that there is something big living deep down in the loch. Who knows what it can be, but I would love to think it's Nessie. So apparently whatever this sonar thing is, they're, it, it's quite clear to them that it is alive. Hmm. <clears throat> it's not like a boat or something. Well, this is compelling, then, <clears throat> isn't it? Imagine all along there is something down there. Th that would be amazing. But uh, this was on October 5th. It says the mass was picked up around 4 p.m. on Wednesday when Ronald was skippering a boat with technology from two years ago about six miles from Fort August. The dad of three added, a sonar expert has looked at it and says it's genuine. There's definitely something down there. I'm going to give the image to the company that made the equipment to look at it. Ronald has worked on Loch Ness all his life and he hopes Nessie hunters do not descend on it in the wake of the mystery image. He added, 
It is not unusual for us to pick up a big contact on the sonar. It is quite modern equipment. It was 190 meters deep, and the lock is around 300 meters deep. Wow, that's really deep. I think that's like a thousand feet deep. That's too deep. Nessie expert Steve Feltham said Ronald's sonar image was the most compelling evidence of the existence of the legendary creature he had seen. Let me ask you something. Yes. What, what do they do in that lock? It's a lock, is, I believe, is Scottish for lake. lake. Yeah. Right. So why don't they take the lake, mm-hmm. and drain the motherfucker, what? see what the hell is inside it, bitch, put it to rest, and then fill it back up again with some nice trout and get some people fishing over there. Do you know how much water is in there? Enough to drain and put it in somewhere else. Where? Lower it. Lower the lock. Stop the madness. I think it's physically impossible to do that. I think it's huge. I will put sand in the bottom of that bitch. It's a thousand feet deep. Let's make it ten feet deep. This is bullshit. (laughs) Well, I... I, Cement. Okay. Fill it up. They, it, it might be a water source for like drinking water. I don't know. I don't know if it's a reservoir. Recycle your toilets. We gotta solve this motherfucker. Okay. Well, uh, I, I I will uh, look a, into your drain suggestion. Drain that lock. I see. Drain that lock. I see. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. At my rally, mm-hmm. make Nessie go away again. My ne- what did you just say? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Make Nessie go away again. Manigua. I see. Anyway, this is Steve Feltham, the Nessie expert. That big, solid, single object down 50 feet off of the bottom of Loch Ness, something the size of a transit van. Now, what's his name? What? What's the man's name? Which, which man? The man who shies away from this stuff. <laughs> it's not you. It's the, uh, Ronald... Ah, Ronald McKenzie. McKenzie. Now, let me tell you something. Yeah? That man is a graduate of Hogwarts. Oh, see. And and he's been known to nip the bud. You know what I'm saying? I have no idea what you're saying. He takes a little shot off the the one-hitter occasionally. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's so shy from the public because he's high like a bitch. Ronald, stop with your daydreams. Stop skipping about. All right. Around here, we call it driving. You are driving a boat. Skippering. Uh, oh, is that what your issue is? The word skippering? No man is. No man would be caught skippering about. No man is an island. All right, go on. Uh, Convince me more. I'm. I'm intrigued. I, I just don't like this Mackenzie character. Why? I feel like. I feel like him shying away is his way of shying in. Not everybody looks. For for uh, to be in the spotlight, David. This man's trying to feed raccoons on a bigger level. That well, the raccoon whisperer. Uh, is that what you're? Are you trying to compare this man to the raccoon whisperer? I think the raccoon whisperer is a secret ladies' man. He could. I mean, he his... wheels them in, and then he starts playing his drums for him and music. And before you know it, he's bedding down an old Facebook friend. I don't think so. I don't... Yeah. I think you are... No, I don't I, think so. I sense evil ways. Oh, stop it. What? Don't... You know what? You take that back. I'm just saying There's I like Santana. There's nothing evil... Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, so this person says, I definitely think Nessie is an animal, and I think we are getting closer to finding the answer. Is that what Mackenzie said? No, that is what Steve Feltham said. Feltham? Mm-hmm. That sounds dirty. You sound dirty. Now, uh huh. The gig's up. Okay. Felt them up. All right. Now, I'd like to ask you Mm -hmm. Do you believe that there is a Nessie? I thought we were doing John Sebastian songs again. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's eye? Now, you had said I should cut all that out. Oh, but now bring you that part back. Reference John Sebastian. No, no, I said that the stuff up to uh, through that part's good. It's the stuff after that that's no good. I don't even remember what's after it. It's all that's, See, that's what I'm saying. It's not memorable. Uh-huh. Now, what I'm saying... Yes. Also, uh-huh. at this moment... Yes. Is I do not believe... Well, I uh, tend to believe that it is not true. Why? There's nothing in the lake there. They, but they have a sonar image now of a huge thing down there. So you're telling me lock is the word for lake. So can I just say that this is called Lake Ness? 
I don't know. I, I mean, I said lock yeah. is a work word for lake, yeah, but I could be totally wrong. Fathered around Lake Ness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would think that if someone, I think this Ralph McKenzie character would have seen something by now. All the 30 years he's been skippering about, he hasn't seen anything. Okay, that, he's not the skipper. Ronald McKenzie's the skipper. That's what I said. Ronald McKenzie's skippering about. Okay. Now, this other guy, Paul Feltham. Steve Feltham. Yes, he did. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, I kind of like to believe I'm somebody who likes to believe in magic or... Uh, uh, I just think it would have been seen by now is what I'm saying. It's been... Many people have claimed they saw it. Ooh. Many people have claimed they've seen it. Well, that's true. So, uh, I mean, somebody saw it. Somebody made the, the first uh, discovery. There could, be, there could be a family of Nessies down there and you just don't know. Well, what, just what possibly could it be? It could. What do you mean? They Other say than it's the a Nessie? large mass. They, what kind of fish is that big? What it is, the jury's still out. There's a number of possibilities. It's not a long neck. It's not one of these long neck dinosaurs that is the classic hope of, well, me when I was seven and many other people believed there was dinosaurs swimming about in Loch Ness. There's not. We would see those, I think. The most likely candidates are extremely big fish but then it doesn't mean that that is the explanation there's some people that believe there's a spaceship on the bottom of this loch so all we know is that's a contact with one of these animals an animal what kind of animal lives underwater it's uh, aquatic i mean a lot of things live underwater there's a things turtle? that uh it's a big tortoise well, maybe. Maybe it's a similar to a tortoise in that it only has to come up every once in a while uh, for air. Is the Loch Ness saltwater, brackish, or freshwater? Eh, brackish. How do you like that? <laughs> I will go to the Wikipedia and they will tell me something. Brackish. Yeah, uh, it's a freshwater. Loch Ness is a large, <coughs> deep, freshwater loch in oh, the Scottish it's Highlands. It's not a shark. It's not a whale. It's probably some sort of massive octopeel, which is an octopus eel. Well, they said they do have eels there, Octop and they have large trout, but uh, I, I honestly... is trout. They, yeah. Now that would be a motherfucker. You go fishing, and it turns out he's going fishing too, on your ass. See, I'm trying to see how big it is. It's 22 miles long and two miles wide, basically. That's a big lake. And it's it's at its deepest. It's 750 feet. They're saying. That's pretty deep. And but the average depth is 433 deep, uh, feet, which is shit is crazy deep. What the fuck is going on? Crazy deep. So it could be some sort of thing we've never seen before. I mean, do you think we've discovered everything that's in the ocean? So what? Years ago? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. Years ago, this area was just not flooded, and it was uh, it was a uh, it was a valley or something. I, I, are you asking me if this? If you think why the hell is the thing so deep? It just keeps keeps filling up with water over years. It was a great flood. What made it this deep? I don't know. Loch Ness is the second largest Scottish loch by surface area, but due to its great depth, it is the largest by volume in the British Isles. Yeah. A 2016 survey claimed to have discovered a crevice extending to a depth of 889 feet. It contains more water than all the lakes in England and Wales combined. Holy shit. It's huge. What do they use it for? Is it feed uh, reservoirs? Loch Ness serves as the lower storage reservoir for the Foyers Pump Storage Hydroelectric Scheme, which, the which was the first of its kind in the United Kingdom. The turbines were originally used to provide power for a nearby al aluminum smelting plant, or as they like to call it, aluminium, but now electricity is generated and supplied to the national grid. Huh. So I guess they use it for some sort of water 
Hydroelectricity. That's my my guess. I think there's a monster there. I think it's a I well I don't know that it's a monster, you know, like Godzilla. Has anyone ever been hurt in all these years? I don't know. I don't know if they've been hurt, but what I mean, if it's not a monster and it's just like this large, huge thing or a group of large, huge things that live there, you know, They're maybe it just eats fish. One. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking there's a few of them down there. It's so deep. There's just no way. It that, must have had offspring. There's probably other ones. I feel like. Why not? What? Who? Well, who is it hurting for me to think that there's something living there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they said they found something on the sonar image, so why can't they uh, go down there in some sort of uh, autonomous sub with some robots and uh, see what's up? I mean, they might be able to, like the like they do on uh, in the ocean. You mean? Yeah. How far down was the Titanic? Oh, that I don't know. I bet it wasn't that far down. Uh, I think it might be miles down. The, the Titanic is miles down. Why is that? How did it get all the way down there? It it floated down there. You're telling me that the ocean is 10,000 feet deep? Oh, more than that. Why is the ocean so deep? What is going on here? The, uh, Let's drink that thing. <laughs> The wreck of the Titanic lies at a depth of about 12,500 feet. That's three, that's two and a half miles down. It's, 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 it's deep. Uh, how deep is the ocean? How deep is your love? <laughs> because we've got problems in this world. And I think it's because the ocean's so deep. The average depth of the ocean is about 12,100 feet. The deepest part of the ocean is called the Challenger Deep and is located beneath the Western Pacific Ocean in the southern end of the Mariana Trench. Challenger Deep is approximately 36,200 feet deep. Holy cow! Wait, you're telling me that's up there near Seattle and the coast of California? Um, I, uh, I think it's south. All right. By, like, Guam and by the uh, those islands. Oh, very deep ocean. Right, but the... So... 36,000 feet. That's It's pretty deep. That's what I'm saying. There's no way we have discovered everything. It's just impossible. It's impossible. So, I'm, I'm going to say yes to Loch Ness Monster... Dave is a. Are you a solid no, or I'm you not, are, a, are you a comedy, a comedy no? I'm a half no here because I don't know what that image is telling me. I think it's more likely there's a Loch Ness monster than there is a Bigfoot. Oh, you do? Bam! How you like that? I don't like Sabato. it at all. I, I disagree. Sabato. Sab- what? Sabato. Anthony Sabato. Hey, Anthony Sabato, can I help you? <laughs> All right. Well, so that was it for our unsolved mystery. Or is that it's what none that we have solved zero. We Nothing's were, been solved. Well, it's all up in the solve. air. Yes, but it is an unsolved mystery. And uh, I personally think yes. Also, I also am of the mind that nothing is real. So if nothing whoa, whoa. is real and it's all a program of some right, sort, Lennon, relax. then uh, why wouldn't they just, you know create some code and put something kooky in, in Loch Ness. Why not? Or Lake Champlain. I uh, I don't know. You know, it's possible. Champ. Champy. Champy Champerson. All right. So Dr. Champ, let me tell you something. Okay. Lake Champlain's big, but it's not that big. Jesus Christ. It's not that big? Not as big as the fucking Loch Ness. Loch Ness? Loch Ness. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. Yeah, but you don't want to be out there on a windy night. I'll give you that much. Hey. Okay, Dave. <laughs> you know, it's not big, but... <laughs> hey. I will tell you that Lake Champlain is five times the size of Loch Ness. Holy cow, what? No, come on. <laughs> Boy, see, I was playing you. I was just testing your ass. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. see? See how big it is over here? How small they are over there? And they're making such a big deal of everything. 
But if that is it, it's it's not that deep. Though. It's not n- not anywhere near as deep. The max depth of Lake Champlain is four hundred feet. Oh, that's pretty deep. <clears throat> the, while that is true, feet. the average depth is ten. Is sixty four. Whoa! Unless you're on the shore. If you're on the shoreline, the average depth is about six inches. That's true. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Lake Champlain is a motherfucker. What do you mean about? It's not by that. It's not to be taken lightly. All you right. could get caught out there in a storm, and it could feel like the ocean. Well, it's pretty. You ever heard of the, o- the ocean. Edmund Fitzgerald? Yes, that, that was... motherfucker happened in a lake. No, it didn't. Oh no! I don't think so. Really? I think it was Atlantic, the Atlantic Ocean. No, it was a lake. It was. I don't know. We gotta look that up there too. Come on, bring it on. <sighs> Can't stand it sometimes. Come on, we can do a mashup mashup of uh of Ringo Starr and uh, Gordon Lightfoot. <clears throat> You're hundred percent right again, Dave. Bam, The Edmund Fitzgerald was an American Great Lakes freighter that sank in Lake Superior. Yeah, you know why I call it Lake Superior? Cause that she couldn't beat it. It was superior to the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's just before a- they just called it Lake. Uh-huh. No. I, I anyway, you know what? I is don't Is this know. thing on? Have people lost their lives? Is, is this too soon? Lake Do Su- I need to write a ballad? Lake Superior is the largest of the Great Lakes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Where is that? Michigan? <clears throat> uh, it is shared... By the Canadian province of Ontario to the north and the U.S. state of Minnesota. Now, where does the great get you gummy? To the west and Wisconsin and upper peninsula of Michigan to the south. See? I know everything. Now, where's the great get you gummy? <laughs> I don't know how to spell get you gummy. Uh, oh, ask Edmund. I mean, Gordon. Oh, Lake Superior is get you gummy. Oh, see? I was tricking you again. Boom. Did you know that? I, I know it's part of the song. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> well the that's... man references Lake Gitchigumi. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, how many songs do that? How many artists reference Gitchigumi and get away with it? <laughs> I don't know. Hashtag cancel Gordon Lightfoot. That's appropriation of uh, Native American talk. The Ojibwe name named for the lake is Gitchigami, pronounced Gitchigami. Or Kichigami, a meaning great sea. Oh. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote the name as Gichigumi in the poem The Song of Hiawatha, as did Gordon Lightfoot in his song The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Well, so what I am saying is, just because it's a lake don't mean it ain't going to take your life. Well, there you go. Gichigumi on that. Get your goomy on that. Get your goomy uptown. Let's get jiggy with it. Get your goomy, you know. And so that is all. I'm going to shut the door. All right. On the unsolved mystery of the Loch Ness Monster. Get you. Goomy. All right, so next you have to choose from conspiracies or deep, dark secrets. Well, let's go deep, dark secrets. I knew you were going to say that. Is it Don Henley? No, it's John Podesta and whether or not he was really Chester Bennington's father. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. A lot of people believe that John Podesta is the father of Chester Bennington. Now that of course cannot be proven as of right now, other than to look at the similarities between how they look and of course some other odd things that occurred. Ah, Chester Bennington. Now there are quite a few websites about this. Some of them uh, present the idea as, well, this could be, but there's a website out there that is just Letting you know it is the truth. All right. What uh, <laughs> website is that? 
It's me dot me. That man is an egomaniac. Well, I think it's because it spells meme, right? <gasps> it says, John Podesta is now suspected in the murder of his bastard son, Lincoln Parks, Ish. Chester Bennington. It's safe to say that Podesta is also the chief suspect of being the family friend who molested and raped Chester as a child. Lincoln Park coincidentally had a broken pedophile symbol for their band's logo. And obviously this was no fucking coincidence. This person's very angry. This is John Miranda. He's very, uh, very angry and very sure. Bennington was beginning to become vocal about the horror he endured during his childhood. The logical and plausible conclusion is that Podesta had him silenced. The murder of Bennington brings new focus upon the blatantly staged suicide of singer Chris Cornell, who was also becoming a voice speaking out about organized pedophile syndicates in the entertainment business, government, and society at large. Cornell and Bennington were close friends, Bennington even being the godfather to one of Cornell's daughters. You have to be a damn fool not to understand these men were both fucking murdered. They will not go unanswered. It is time for the arrest of the murdering psychopath predator pedophile John Podesta. R.I.P. Chester, R.I.P. Chris. It is rumored that Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park was John Podesta's bastard child. Chester Bennington struggled his whole life with mental health issues as a result of being molested as a child. Chester Bennington's parents divorced when Chester was nine years old after his father found out his mother was messing around. Chester Bennington's mother, Elaine, had an affair with John Podesta. Chester Bennington received a grant from the Clinton Foundation as a result of John Podesta's influence. John Podesta personally knew he was Chester's biological father, something that was not revealed to Chester until much later in years Possibly just recently. Can I ask you something? Certainly. <clears throat> so, so this is saying so he's his son. Yes, that's what the, the claim. So this is. is proven. He's saying this is proven. This man, first of all, who is John Miranda, and what uh, credentials does he have? What kind of um, what gives him insight into this case? Other than his ability to slander people and use foul words. He is John Miranda. He is exercising his free speech. John Miranda? So that's a fake name. I guess. All right. So he's a fake person and his claims are fake. I don't know that. You know what? John Podesta is most likely an evil person. But this is what happens. They're watering down the the fact that he's a fucking kitchen-eating, soul-kitchen Satan worshiper. And we're messing it up with this stuff just because he looks like fucking looks like the guy. Now, either his either John either Chester Bennington's mom had an affair with John Podesta or she didn't. Did she or didn't she? End of story. That's just let's just go with the one claim there. And if it's not true, then all of this is just nonsense. If that's true, we might be honest something. I don't believe anyone who goes by the name of John Miranda without more in, insight into his reputation and, and his, his you know what's it called validity I don't think John Pires is a good person but I don't think he killed fucking Chester Bennington why waste your time it's fucking Lincoln Park is this guy a big Lincoln Park fan <clears throat> John uh, Miranda into Lincoln Park is I that what this know. is in imowired.com there's another article And it says, Chester Bennington had voiced how tormented he was due to having been sexually abused as a child. Uh This is where it gets even crazier. It is said that Bennington was John Podesta's illegitimate son. It is said by who? The the resemblance is beyond eerie. Now, are you looking at these pictures? Yeah, but, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I don't think they look exactly alike. Aside from the age, the eyebrows, ear gauges, and a sweet versus satanic vibe, they are practically identical. Not just in those side-by-side shots, but in all of them. Chester Bennington was interviewed by heavy metal mag Kerrang! He confessed that he had been horribly molested as a child by an older man. 
If I think back to when I was really young, when I was being molested, to when all these horrible things were going on around me, I shudder, he said. His most shocking revelation came in 2008, when he revealed to Kerrang! magazine a friend, a few years older than him, began molesting him around the age of seven. He revealed it escalated from a touchy, curious, what does this thing do, into full-on crazy violations. <gasps> I, ew. <laughs> I was getting beaten up and being forced to do things I didn't want to do. It destroyed my self-confidence. Like most people, I was too afraid to say anything. That man's name was Jim Norton. The star then suffered in silence for a staggering six years for fear of what would happen if he said anything. Hey, he should have suffered longer. You know, man up. Take that shit to the grave. How'd your sob story work out for you? Did it make you feel better? I don't think so. So no one needs to hear it, and it didn't help you. It doesn't help me. Well, well. Uh, oh, fuck yourself. Okay. <laughs> I would say that if you've been abused... And if you're going to feel like shit, whether you say something or not, then maybe if you say something, someone who else is being abused might, uh, you know, get the courage to take some action and get out of the situation. Yeah, before you know it, we're all cooking breakfast together. I think you're and talking no one, about spirit cooking? No one's wearing their pants. I see. Who wears the pants in this family is what I'm saying. Our family? In their family. I see. In the, in the Bennington family, who's wearing her pants? Ron Bennington exactly. wears smoke pants. God damn it. What if you had like a smoke that like you had some kind of a smoke, right? And it just stayed close to the body. So you put you put this, you almost spray it on. It's like a small fog and you're wearing it instead of pants. Smoke pants. One theory, Chester Bennington was raised by his dad, a police officer who was a detective in the sex crime unit. It has been surmised that his dad may have adopted Chester to free him from a terrible situation. Where's Chester's mom? I don't know. Why doesn't she say whether she had an affair with Jean Podesta or not? Why don't we put this there? Oh, you know, I'm just that one thing right there. Did she? Did, yeah. Was she a Perkins waitress? What's going on here? This is not true. That's the funny thing. It's not true. All right? Where's the father? I don't know. Where's old crazy Bennington? Sorry, guys. Your music sucked and your story's full of holes. I'm not finding anything about John Podesta and Susan Eubanks. Let me, let me look again. Did she work in D.C.? Are they from D.C.? From Maryland? Where are they from? Let's see. Is there any God-given reason that this should even be a thing? Looks like they've been up to a little bit of the fabrication, yes. Let's see. <clears throat> Shortly before the singer's apparent suicide, he announced that Linkin Park's next, next record would polarize people and would have a much darker feel. Chester was adopted and as a young boy suffered sexual abuse from an older man. There are suggestions backed with an 80% facial recognition match that John Podesta is Chester's father and quite possibly his abuser. You know what else those facial matches do? They, they match black people with gorillas. Is that true? Yeah. From TheVerge.com, Google engineer apologizes after Photos app tags two black people as gorillas. Google came under fire after its new Photos app categorized photos in one of the most racist ways possible. He tweeted at Google asking what kind of sample images the company had used that would allow such a terrible mistake to happen. So I, I don't give it any validity. It's thought that Chester was going to go public with his information around the time of his death. Lincoln Park ran an organization in Haiti called Sustainable Recycling Solutions. This is rumored to have secured funding through a little help from John Podesta. How is it rumored? That doesn't work. I don't like the words rumored or a source at. The band then received $250,000 as a donation from the Clinton Foundation. Who says? Coupled with a visit by Bill Clinton himself. Where's the pictures? 
Uh, you only have to do a short Google search to see the horrific links Bill and Hillary have to Haiti. Okay, but that's, that has nothing to do with this. This is insanity. Lincoln Park's own video of Haiti of the Haiti visit include Mike meeting with Bill Clinton. Today we're in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, on our way to SRS. While we were in the studio working on our album, I got word that President Clinton was going to come and visit our site here in Port-au-Prince. His foundation gave us a grant last year, but he's never seen the place, and I'm excited to be able to show it to him in person. Okay, so we met with, but where's Podesta? Where's the affair with Podesta? Ah, they're full of shit. I don't know. I don't. I, all I all I can say is that Chester Bennington and John Podesta look a lot alike, and I can confirm that their logo is that uh, abused child logo. That that weird pyramid triangles inside of triangles. It's the pedophile. Yeah, their, logo. their family would have lived somewhere near John Podesta. I think maybe they did. I don't know. I don't know. Either. I don't think so. But I will say this: I searched on Google, or on I searched on YouTube prior to the podcast today, looking for videos on this subject specifically, and they have all been wiped. No longer available. No longer available. Now private. They are not allowing this to even be out there. So, you know, is that a Streisand effect? Could be. I don't know. Very interesting stuff, I would say. Interesting. So you're not by, you know, you, but do you even admit that the two look exactly alike? They look similar. Yes. You'll just, you're going to say similar. <clears throat> they look similar. I'd say they look nearly identical. But that is my opinion. Are you ready for our last? Uh, yes. Our last segment of this episode? Yes. So we've already done Deep Dark Secrets, and we've already done Unsolved Mystery, so that leaves us, that leaves us with a conspiracy. Yes. Today's conspiracy is... Wait, that wasn't a conspiracy? The last one was a conspiracy. That was a deep, dark secret. Which is also a conspiracy. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Okay. Our conspiracy this week yeah. is... Flat Earth. Flat Earth. We'll start with some basic questions. The sky is... In a world where it feels like nothing is as it seems... Blue... It's blue, of course. Oh, the sky's blue. The sky is blue. One plus one is... Two. 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 There's at least one truth we thought was indisputable. And the Earth is... Flat. Flat. The Earth is flat. My reality, my senses tell me that the Earth is flat and stationary. Or so I thought. What do you know about flat Earth? Uh, I don't know a hell of a lot about it. You know a lot about it, you say? I don't know much about it. I don't know much. I don't know the shape of New Jersey much less flat earth. That is true. That is actually true. <coughs> I learned that, uh, well, let's not even talk about that. The flat earth model is an archaic conception of earth's shape as a plane or a disc. Archaic? Ma Many ancient cultures subscribe to a flat earth cosmography including Greece until the classical period the Bronze Age and the Iron Age civilizations of the Near East until the Hellenistic period India until the Gupta period and China until the 17th century so they're saying all these places just all thought the earth was flat up until pretty recently 17th century is the 1600s so well, why would they be wrong? Like right now, people are still demonizing me because of uh, my belief that the earth is not a spinning ball and that it's a plane. The Bible says the earth is, is a, a plane. It's not a spinning ball. That being said, so, so when Christians say that I'm, I'm trying to discredit Christianity, when you, there's several parts of the Bible that refer to the corners of the earth or to rise up and look out at all the nations or God above, waters above, the firmament. Uh, it, it's endless. 
But someone recently uh, in, a, in a comment thread said that um, I'm crazy because it goes against all observable reality. Okay, they don't know what the word observable means because observable is what you can see, hear, touch, smell, all like all your senses. Our observable reality is not spinning at a thousand miles an hour. I'm here in peace. Our observable reality shows there's no curve of the earth. Zero construction projects that are long, like no bridges um, have any factoring whatsoever of eight inches per mile square. There's some bridges that are 30 miles long. How much did they factor in the curve? Zip. All airplanes, all their maps, all their tools function as if it is a flat plane. The only evidence they have that it's a spinning ball is because of experts and just uh, math no one can understand and something called the Coriolis effect, which means snipers have to factor in the spin of the earth. If you ever talk to a sniper or do any sniper shooting yourself, you realize that's also a lie. The discovery that the earth was round is most commonly ascribed to the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras. Well, the credit for proving it is usually given to Aristotle. Pythagoras, now is he the same person who had Pythagoras' theorem? I think so, actually. Pythagoras' anyway, theorem? Anyway, English writer Samuel Robotham. That man is robotic. Uh, uh, Robotham? Robotham? Uh, writing under the pseudonym Parallax, produced in 1849 a pamphlet. Zetetic Astronomy, arguing for a flat Earth and published results of many experiments that tested the curvatures of water along, over a long drainage ditch, followed by another, called The Inconsistency of Modern Astronomy and Its Opposition to the Scripture. Robotham also produced studies that purported to show that the effects of ships disappearing below the horizon could be explained by the laws of perspective in relation to the human eye. In 1883, he founded Zetetic Soci Societies in England and New York, to which he shipped a thousand copies of Zetetic Astronomy. Yeah, does that society exist to this day? Zetetic? Uh, I don't know if that society exists to today. I want to be a part of it. You do? I do. You believe the Earth is flat? Well... Oh, you do? I didn't no, know. No, I don't know what the Earth is, but I know that <laughs> yes? Robbie Robertson said this. Oh, what did he say? We are all in the same boat, ready to float off the edge of the world. The flat old world. Oh, shit. That is from Life is a Carnival. Well, so... You... So you... Th I'm surprised. I didn't realize that you were kind of pro-flat Earth. Well, I'm open to the uh, I'm open to ideas. I will say that I'm more open to flat Earth than I am global warming. Yeah, so take that and smoke that in your your hot pipe. In 1972, Charles K. Johnson incorporated the Earth Flat Earth Society and steadily built it up to about 3,000 members. He spent years examining the studies of flat and round Earth theories and proposed evidence of a conspiracy against flat Earth. The idea of a spinning globe is only a conspiracy of error that Moses, Columbus, and FDR all fought. His article was published in the magazine Science Digest in 1980. It goes on to state, If it is a sphere, the surface of a large body of water must be curved. The Johnsons have checked the surfaces of Lake Tahoe and the Salton Sea without detecting any curvature. The society declined in the 90s following a fire in its headquarters in California, and Johnson died in 2001. Well, it seems like they were taken care of very well then. No more problem from the Zeta Society. Well, then, with the internet, the theory got big again. Like many modern movements, this one has grown in large part out of the internet with rappers like Odd TV evangelizing to hundreds of thousands of subscribers. No more living on a cartoon ball. And YouTube channels like Globusters. Encouraging skepticism about what you've been taught. Oh, Jesus, who knew this internet would come and fuck everything up again? These people are persistent. We well, must put a big problem for them again. This is the problem, though. So if you are a flat earther... In my opinion, if you think the Earth is flat, if you think Sasquatch is real, 
if you think John Podesta is, whoa, 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 is whoa, whoa, Chester whoa, Bennington's whoa, whoa, whoa. father. Why are we, why are we, but why are we bunching all these together? Because I'm still speaking. Oh. What I are you, Robert De Niro? I would say that that is your right to speak about it freely. What are you, Mel Gibson and Texas? Under Cabin? the uh, free speech. What was that movie Free called? speech gives you the opportunity to speak freely. But YouTube has, in 2019, YouTube said that it was making changes to its algorithm to reduce the distribution of videos based on conspiracy theories, including the flat earth, including everything. So, like I said before, that the Chester Bennington, John Podesta videos... I was searching for them on YouTube. They never came up. And here's why. Because YouTube has changed the way they do things. And they don't want conspiracies to have any sort of life. Which is begs the question, at what point are they just determining if something that's factual is a conspiracy theory? That's what they're doing. They are basically making decisions for you. They are determining what you are allowed to watch and not watch. Uh, I don't like that. They're corrupt. That's a that's an even bigger conspiracy deep dark secret unsolved mystery, really. Wait, wait, that. Hey, wait, that. <clears throat> anyway, members of the Flat Earth Society and other Flat Earthers claim that NASA and other government agencies conspire to delude the public into believing the Earth is spherical. According to the most widely spread version of current flat Earth theory, NASA is guarding the Antarctic ice wall that surrounds Earth. Flat Earthers argue that NASA photoshops its satellite images based on observations that the color of the oceans changes from image to image and that continents seem to be in different places. The publicly perpetuated image is kept up through a large-scale practice of compartmentalization according to which only a select number of individuals have knowledge about the truth. Donald Trump. Do you think he has knowledge about the truth? No, but he's suppressing it. He's got the knowledge. You think he's got, you think he's suppressing the knowledge? No, he's not suppressing the knowledge. He just knows the knowledge. Once you know the knowledge, you know that it's not a matter of suppressing it. It just is. Admitting that the world isn't a spinning ball is very traumatic for me. I went through a very hard time. I was even drinking at the time. It was very intense. Okay. Observable reality says this is not spinning. Observable reality says every single thought you can come up with or test will tell you it isn't spinning. Every single thing. Lighthouses, curvature test, everything. There is a video on BitChute by a gentleman named Eric Dubay where he offers 200 proofs that the Earth is flat. 200. 200 proofs Earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubé. 1. The horizon always appears perfectly flat 360 degrees around the observer regardless of altitude. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane, and drone footage show a completely flat horizon over 20 plus miles high. Only NASA and other government space agencies show curvature in their fake CGI photos and videos. 2. The horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. If Earth were in fact a globe, no matter how large, as you ascended, the horizon would stay fixed and the observer would have to tilt looking down further and further to see it. This is the kind of stuff when people talk about this stuff, I just say, okay, I can't prove it either way. There's no way to know what you're saying is true. And if you say, even if I knew what you said was true, I can't prove that it's true because of what you're saying. I don't, you know, even if you can prove what you're saying happens, I can't prove it's why it happens. Here are some flat earth proofs that they offer us on uh, one of these flatearthfacts.com. The Philadelphia skyline is clearly visible from Apple Pie Hill in the New Jersey Pine Barrens 40 miles away. Oh my God. God. If Earth were a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, factoring in the 205 foot elevation of Apple Pie Hill, the Philly skyline should remain well hidden beyond 335 feet of curvature. I just want to know 
When you start talking about this apple pie hell, mm-hmm. are you thinking about vanilla ice cream? I certainly am. Because <laughs> all I thought was I want a pie with ice cream a la mode. I understand. I don't know anything about the circumference of anything. I want to go to Apple Pie Hill and eat it. So they're <clears throat> losing me. These people are losing me. The New York City skyline is clearly visible from Harriman State Park's yes, Bear Mountain, 60 miles away. That's crazy. If Earth were a ball, 25,000 miles in circumference, viewing from Bear Mountain's 1,283-foot summit, the Pythagorean theorem determining distance to the horizon being 1.23 times the square root of the height in feet, the New York City skyline should be invisible behind 170 feet of curved Earth. Pythagoras didn't take into account the X-factor. What is the X-factor? That's what I'm talking about. I see. Yes. Do you hate when they do that? This generation? Uh, do what? You know, they go, how much? How much would you like? And then the answer is, yes. Like, that makes no sense. How mu- How much, how loud does that go? All, all the loud. Oh, I see. Uh, <clears throat> it is often possible to see the Chicago skyline from sea level. Oh my God, again with these uh, anecdotal evidence. 60... 60- well, what kind of? I mean, if you do, if you go there, it will. It should be your evidence, right? Yeah, but what is that? Who saw what? Why uh, does why does that why does that event happening then symbolize that the Earth is flat? Because what they're saying is, if but, the Earth is a sphere, there's a a mathematical amount of the curve, like the curve at this many many feet should go down this amount. So wait, let me ask you so something. So that's what they're saying. If so this th- is so logical mm-hmm. and there's so much evidence. Yes. Why then uh, your scientists are just lying to us. They're all in cahoots lying to us even though there's uh, so much evidence, they just address it as as being quackery. Is that what this is? Because otherwise it either is or it isn't. It is or it isn't. I don't understand how you could debate. So if you have evidence, they have evidence. Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, apple pie. It is or it isn't. 199 from Foundations of Many Generations by E. Eschini. The only thing the fable of the revolving earth has done, it has shown the terrible power of a lie. A lie has the power to make a man a mental slave so that he dares not back the evidence of his own senses to deny the plain and obvious movement of the sun he sees before him, when he feels himself standing on an earth utterly devoid of motion, at the suggestion of someone else, he's prepared to accept that he's spinning furiously around. When he sees a bird flying and gaining over the ground, he's prepared to believe that the ground is really traveling a great number of times faster than the bird. Finally, in order to uphold the imagination of a madman, he is prepared to accuse his maker of forming for him a censiferous lie. There is no evidence of Bigfoot that is has not been refuted. So if this has been refuted, it's refuted, or it isn't. I don't know. I, you know. Why? Why is there debate over this? It is or it isn't. How can we not know? What, what is the end game? Why, why do they pretend the Earth is round? What, what do they get out of that? And apparently, Rob Skiba... I knew that motherfucker was involved. ...has revealed something crucial. Rob Skiba? Exactly why NASA is lying to us about the Earth being a globe. All right, what is it? Hello and welcome to the Revolutionary Radio Project. I am your host, Rob Skiba. A lot of people have been asking me, well, okay, if this flat Earth thing is true, if we are in a flat, enclosed system exactly as the Bible describes, then uh, what's the motive? Why would they lie to us? Well... I mean, motive seems pretty easy to me. Uh, Quite clear, actually. First, you get people to doubt the Word of God by destroying the very foundation of our Bible, Genesis, specifically the creation account. Second, set up a new paradigm where God is out and science is in. Evolution thus removes God from the equation. Then when evolution finally runs its course and becomes utterly bankrupt, introduce the idea of intelligent design. But... 
deny the true designer his due credit and place it rather on ancient aliens. Then promote the ancient alien theme as much as possible in all forms of media by perpetrating the concept of Earth as a tiny blue marble orbiting an average sun in an average galaxy among trillions of other galaxies in an ever-expanding universe. With so much potential for life to exist in such a vast expanse, the idea of alien scientists being our creators seems a lot more plausible over time and heavy indoctrination. The stage is finally set for our ancient alien creators to return and bestow upon us their miracles, signs, and wonders in order to convince us all the more that all religions are false. We then put our trust in them. And finally, when Christ does return, we are all convinced that he is the enemy and our united world gathers together to make war with him. Is that what's happening? I don't know. I'm just considering the possibilities here. Skiba is a documentary filmmaker behind such classic films as Archon Invasion, The Rise, Fall, and Return of the Nephilim. I never heard any of that stuff. He says the bigger picture, men, oh, Nephilim are these giants that were roamed the earth. I never heard of them. You never heard of that? No. Where's the evidence? We got that might dinosaur be... bones. Where are they? That might oh, be. Oh, we no... don't have dinosaur bones? Nope. They're just too radiated for us to really have? problem with this is there should be a definitive answer they're hiding God I think Why? the problem is is that none of this is real mm. we are sea monkeys we Sh-monkey. are monkeys ant farms you know yeah. what I'm saying we could be the alien ant farm oh smooth criminal <laughs> I'm just saying we, it, we could Annie. be sea monkeys. Annie, are you okay? We, somebody could have added oxygen to a bag of, you know, something for for beings that are so huge that we are we couldn't even perceive how big they are. Sea monkeys are just shrimp. That's the name of my book. Yeah, and you know what? We might just be a, another society's equivalent to sea monkeys. I just don't know. Sea monkeys are just shrimp. That and other sushi delicacies. I see. All right, well, that is it for this episode. For This is our fourth and final episode of October 2020. It's been a fun, spooky uh, time, right? Spooky. Spooky, 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 spooky. Spooky, wa- spooky Washington. Who's that? Spooky. Oh, I see. Is there anything you want to say, David? I want to say, if the earth's so flat, how come my driveway's so steep? Yeah, my driveway's awful. Huh? Explain that to me. All right. Uh, I, you know what? I don't know if the earth is flat or not. I've if always... the earth is flat... Uh- why, when I smoke a joint, does the smoke go up in the air? Well, that, I don't know that has anything to do with the earth being flat Man, or round. prove it otherwise. I see. Uh, anywho, uh, you know, I am open to all of it. I'm open to all of it because a lot of times the truth is stranger than fiction, and none what of it's I, real. What I want to know is, yeah, when you are inquisitive, mm. why do you often tilt your head and look upwards? That's another uh, show entirely. That what would be our. What the fuck is that? That would be our body language show. Why the fuck we doing that? Oh, you are just. Uh, I don't know. You're back in. off the mic. <gasps> oh shit! David, <laughs> David. What? Sorry. You gotta cut that part out. Just leave the end. They'll get the joke. It's not a joke, though. Oh, well, I I need to re-educate my comedy. Yeah, you do. Uh, it's 50 years later. I have to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, if you have missed any of our other 94 episodes, please feel free to head over to middleagedcoolkids.com. And um, we, have a, we have them all there. Plus, we have... My documentary, Dave's reaction videos. We have old podcast episodes from 15, 16 years ago. And our short-lived cooking show on YouTube. We just couldn't, couldn't get that together. But 
I do have a, a secret announcement to make. Well, it's not so secret since I'm going to be announcing it, but we are weeks away from getting internet that's not DSL. <laughs> so I think with new internet is going to bring a shit ton more of videos. And also this podcast can now become a video podcast <gasps> because I won't have to literally, it takes hours and hours to upload anything uh, because we have DSL. So pretty soon we're going to have some sort of fiber optic internet and I'm very excited about it and this this podcast will be visual so um, we're going to have to set up the place better or something I figure we could just put the words up and have a ball follow it like a follow the bouncing ball <laughs> with no with no video that is the video okay all right so that is it for this week. Either that, or we could put it onto like pages, and then like when the next page comes, we can have a the thing go beep, and then they know to turn the page. Uh-huh. Yeah, how's that? We can wheel it in on a projector, you know, with a screen, turn uh-huh. the page, put in the time to put in the new reel, that type of thing, perhaps. Ah. Uh... Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. We will see you next time, America. And... Huh? Turn the page. No. I just want to shout out to Nancy because I just love her so much. These boots was made for walking. Not that, Nancy. All right. See you next time, America. Whoa, man. Woman. (laughs) You know Flat Earthers. I guarantee it. But you don't know who they are because they're afraid of talking about it. One, two, three. We're not crazy.